How you doing? Uh, my name's George, the guitarist for a band called Popular Stranger, local band. Only played a number of gigs. Our, Too much, uh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> George from Popular Stranger. Andy, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing, <laughs> doing very well. Hey, uh, George, uh, let's chat about, first of all, um, how we know each other. We go way back. We do. How many years do you reckon it is? 2008. Uh, yeah, 2008, so do the maths. Yeah, because you started at Nova at the same time that I did, literally yeah. the same week. Yep. You were George the Tech. Well, that's where George the Tech was born, wasn't it? It was apparently, yes. And uh, it, it was referenced a number of times on air. Yep. Bob Francis. Bob Francis. <laughs> Graham Corns. I've, I was, I've even been grilled on air by Bob Francis. <laughs> For, <laughs> you haven't lived until you've been grilled by yeah, Bob Francis. Yeah, exactly. And the thing yeah. is, um, only a certain amount of people got grilled by Bob Francis because he's now dead. Exactly. So <laughs> you're a limited edition griller. <laughs> Pretty right, Joe. Well done. Yeah, um, no, so- I've, made, I've made the cut. Yeah. <laughs> so we started at Nova at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in Casanovering slash programming and you yep. were in IT. Yep. And that's where our relationship bloomed. Yeah. How many years ago? 2008, you reckon? 2008. That's when I started. Do you want to hear a funny story? Sure. I, I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about you the other day. Mm. <laughs> so I was, th- I was thinking when, okay, we started around the same time, but when did we actually start hanging out? And uh, I don't remember what time of the year, let's just say middle of the year, yeah. we started. Yeah. And obviously, like you said, you're in a different department. So it's not like we uh, cross paths every day. Probably yeah. did for business reasons, I guess. Sure. But I remember the very first Christmas party we had <laughs> at the uh, the garage in Light Square. Funnily enough, I don't. <laughs> that, might, that might explain what I'm about to say. Because I remember I was hanging out, you know, with uh, my new colleagues, and uh, I was I was wide eyed, wide eyed, and uh, trying to yeah, try not to embarrass myself. Basically. Yeah, because you hadn't worked in the media before this. Had nah. You? So I, I was. I remember going to this Christmas party, and there was all the uh, celebs. There was, I remember Jane Doyle was there, yeah. Bob Francis, uh, Keith Conlon, Tony Pilkington, John Blake. And I remember sitting there going, fire out. Because my previous job was, I was I come from defense. Yeah. And uh, for those who may or may not have ever worked in defense, it's, it's a very formal environment. And then you go to radio. <laughs> and, <laughs> it is open slather, son. It's pretty much. It's, it's chalk and cheese. And I remember being in the, mind you though, in, we've had many working defense Software engineers get a bit of alcohol in them, and yeah, yeah it gets messy. So. Well, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming because you've got to hold back at your job, and yeah. you can't be the yeah. real person, pretty much, because of the rules and regulations. And then you get a bit of uh, old mate into you, yeah. and you become George <laughs> the party animal. Yeah. So Christmas parties in defence were quite rowdy. They were good fun. Yeah. But then I remember at this particular, the first one I had at at a Nova was at a garage, and I remember towards the end of the night, word went around. In the uh, in the venue, yeah. and they're like, you know that new guy, <laughs> and it was like, who? It was like Andy. It was like, oh, I know, I know. yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, yeah, he's out, passed out in the footpath, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I, that's what I realised. Is like. I reckon I'm going to get to like this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that you that walked out and Graham Corns had said something to to you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, no. Um, George was helping me in the gutter. Oh, right, because he, yeah, yeah. he was my immediate boss. All yeah, right, yeah. so George. Um, is a legend for looking after me because yeah. he didn't have to. He could have yeah. just left me there to rot <laughs> with my Euros or whatever I had at the time. Um, and apparently, Graham Corns had walked out and was like, "Yeah, <laughs> shaking his head like these young kids don't it's, know how to ha- handle themselves." It's such a dad thing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, who was the guy that performed at that Christmas party? It was like an Australian Idol winner, yes, wasn't it? It was too. Uh, yeah. Where's Car? That's the one. Yes. Jeez, glad you can remember. Yeah. 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 Well, that was the only bit that I remember, to be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that might explain. I don't know if you remember our uh, our boss at the time, the gen- the GM, uh, but yes, the 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 alcohol budget ran out literally at around nine o'clock. So uh, yeah, you, yeah, you know what? I was yeah, because yeah. um, I was buying people shots. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, out of your money. Yeah, out of my own personal money, which wasn't really well paid. (laughs) Yeah, because I was going through a time at um, at that time, uh, Mm. it was Agua shots. I remember those. Yes. I'm feeling sick just thinking about it. Yeah, they were some good time because it got to a point when when I was DJing, I'd almost polish off a bottle of Agua. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I was used to it, but obviously just the excitement of the night. Wes yeah. Carl was there, all yeah. those celebrities, like you said. The celebs, yeah. Um, no, it was, it was good, good fun. Time. It, was, it was good fun. And I remember, uh, I won't name the so the celebrity, but she's a well-known, uh, i probably give it away now, news reader <laughs> in Adelaide. And I remember... Freshly retired or? Yes. Yep. <laughs> and she was... And I remember everyone was drunk and, they, and she somehow, the topic got onto her boobs. She okay. brought it up. Really? Was, yeah, and she was talking about how... She's like, hey, everybody! <laughs> like, circle around me! Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, at this point, like, I used to see her on TV yeah. and, you know, very formal news reader. And then I see her at a Christmas party talking about how, what, her boobs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, where, where am I? What's this parallel universe I'm in? <laughs> this ain't defense. <laughs> yeah. This, no. This, yeah. <laughs> this is it, more like attack. It, it's funny because uh, <laughs> I remember the first two, three weeks or four weeks... Um, uh, that I was in radio, uh, yeah, I, I was I, like I said, I was in defence, yeah. And I remember I still uh, the IT team that I was in and that I left defence. I'm still friends with them, believe it or not. We were kept in touch, so they'd all they'd all message me or call me, the, you know, every week or two weeks or three weeks after I left, and they'd all ask, "What's it like in radio, man?" And I'm like, "My God, where <laughs> where do I start?" <laughs> Think of the loosest party you've ever had, yeah. times by 100, and yeah. you get paid for it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> there, there was, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on a, oh, it's a podcast. It's not a. There's no rules, brother. So, it, it, we, uh, you probably remember this. So, it was the first, it was my first week in radio. Yeah. And I remember walking down uh, the corridor towards the Nova Studios. In the opposite direction, there was a bit of an entourage. And in the front of this entourage was a, a young lady. Uh, dressed, how do I say it? Risque. <laughs> Risque, yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm sitting here and I'm walking, getting closer and closer. And do you know when you're walking in the same, uh, walking towards someone in a corridor and you make eye contact and you start to get a bit shy? Yeah. And you yeah, look yeah. up and you look down, you look up yeah. and, then you, and then you keep, and you make eye contact again and they're still looking at you. So then you look around, it's like, oh my God. You've already <laughs> turned to the side, yeah. like letting them through yeah. 10 meters before they're about to arrive because you can't look at them because you've already made eye contact. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So it turns out this lady was, um, there was an expo at the time in Adelaide. Not an actual s, not an uh, not a camping caravan expo. Oh, sexpo, sexpo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah so yeah. she was a uh, apparently a, a porn star. She won the porn star queen of the year or something like that. Bella Donna, her name was apparently allegedly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did and you I'm, did you automatically get your phone out and nah. her as soon as you walked past? <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah. I was like, oh, can you sign my my, my chest? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that what you said? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I wish I did. I should well, have. You're pumping some. Uh, you're pumping some old mates it, it, there at the time. Yeah. But here's the thing. I remember this is the story I used to tell my friends, my former colleagues, because. Yeah. Um, this is a true story. When I remember every now and then, very rarely, but every now and then, I'd be walking down the corridor in the office while I was working in defense. Yeah. And uh, there'll be uh, visitors, right? And uh, they'd be uh, RAF base, uh, RAF uh, staff or yeah. army, or and the ones that would wear the whole the uniform and the and the, and yeah. the badges and it, like, all the metal wear, the metal and the big yeah. boots and like flat tops. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Like, menacing kind of people. And then, I remember. When I was in defense, every now and then you'd see that. Yep. And then in my first week in radio, I saw a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever, whatever the, the guys in my previous job would call me, say, hey, what's it like in radio? I'll tell them that story. That's awesome. Because <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we ever saw any porn stars downstairs when I was around. So like, well done. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was all right. So, and there was, the, the funny thing was, a day or two before, one of the staff members in, in the radio station was tasked to find this person, yeah, to contact them to come on on the in, on site for an interview, yeah. And I remember I casually walked into this person's office. I won't name him, but uh, and yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, he was browsing the internet. For this person. So, as you can imagine, if you punch in her name on in Google. Alarm it, bells. Yes. Yeah. So, he was casually just looking through these particular adult websites yep. for a contact number. And I was, my jaw dropped. I was like, what are you doing? You're going to get in trouble. He goes, no, no. This is this is a this is normal, yeah. <laughs> and again, I had my defense. It's work hat research. On. Yeah, it's it is. It's research. And yeah. here and here's me having my defense hat on. It's like, what are you doing? You can't do that. But <laughs> well, some insider insider secrets here. Mm-hmm. Would you have gotten back to your office and seen that there was alerts about someone looking up risque stuff? Mm-hmm. 
Really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there is, there's software. Goddamn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, there, there was, yeah, as part of, uh, not not my job in particular, but you'll probably find you, you IT departments can filter certain words for yeah. internet usage yeah. in an office. So, and then you can ping which user was using it and stuff. Oh, absolutely. The yeah, time, yeah. the website and all that. So, yeah. Well, Getting uh, nervous, George. <laughs> um, I know I left <laughs> over a few years back, but... <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, it, you, some of the some of the websites you'd see is like, really? During work? But, That's crazy. You know, each to their own, I guess. Maybe they didn't have internet at home. No, that's true. This is actually, this is during the 90s when there was pretty much a free-for-all. But people, wouldn't, you wouldn't do that now though. You know what I mean? Wouldn't nah. You, you wouldn't, right? <laughs> Here at Oscast, anything is possible. <laughs> Fair enough. It's yeah. all research, George. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> at what point, so uh, we'll, we'll get to the popular stranger stuff in mm-hmm. a second. We're still on the journey of you becoming a person, right? <laughs> a real so man. at what point did you sort of, um, had you already been in a band at this time when yeah. I first met you at Nova? Oh, so. Or you just jamming or you just liked doing stuff with no, guitars? I was, and- I, no, no, I was actually in... Uh, re- so we met in 2008. The first band I was in in 1997. So I started playing guitar in 1990. Okay. And uh, pretty much metalhead. Yep. Although, um, you know, you look at me, I'm clean cut and very polite and uh, <laughs> well-dressed. Yeah. Yes. Employed. Yeah. <laughs> Sexy. So, well, <laughs> stretching the boundaries now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've always been a metalhead and that was what got me... Well, metal was the first... And only type of music I used to listen back in the day when yep. I was twenty years old. That's when I remember nineteen ninety when Metallica released a black album and the first song was Enter Sandman. Yeah, look, remember? I was four. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so okay. So when I heard when I first heard Enter Sandman, yep. prior to that as a teenager, I'd listen to I used to be that type, I don't know, uh, back in the day they used to release Compilation albums on in summer, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, top forty hits and all that. Yeah. So, so I, fresh, yes, yeah, so <laughs> things like that. And I remember I used to have a cult, uh, like a Bon Jovi cassette or Aerosmith cassette. Yeah, and as a teenager, I'd, I'd listen to them. I was like, oh, that's not too bad, but that was a bad. It wasn't music. Wasn't really my thing until I've heard Enter Sandman for the very first time. Yeah, and without sounding too corny, and you know, it was a life changing moment basically. Yep. So all of a sudden, I was like, what? Who is this? Like I've I heard of the name Metallica prior to that, but never did anything to care, right? So I checked out their back catalogue and just got hooked. Yeah. So a year or two later, I was like, I want to learn how to play these riffs. So I started playing guitar when I was around twenty years old. Yeah, right. So I remember for the first three or four or five years, I was no intentions ever to join a band, none, because the mere thought of it, I was scared, like just just intimidated by basically yeah because you're, you're a kind introverted sort of gentleman aren't you like <laughs> yeah, really it's, it's not that it's more so because i was just wasn't confident <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're, you're rat shit on the guitar yeah, is basically much, yeah you want to play although i tried but it's just one of those um yeah it's it's scary when yeah. you were learning to do guitar mm-hmm. or play guitar mm-hmm. did you were, you were you just playing out of books or did you go see a, so, a teacher or yeah is, you I, know, had, I had youtube a, wasn't really around back then right not even close yeah yeah we not yeah so i started in 1990 YouTube was like 2010, five. So, yeah, it's, you're telling the story, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the internet wasn't hardly even, even out. So, yep. so I, yeah, I, I, um, through a mutual friend, I met this uh, young dude who lived up in the hills, in the foothills. And uh, the, I remember the first lesson like it was yesterday. I borrowed my friend's twenty dollar Kmart guitar, right? Yeah. And at that point, uh, it was I was, I wouldn't even call myself a guitarist, obviously. So I remember going to this dude's house. I was 20 years old and this kid was 17. Yeah. And uh, he, so he tells me, so he goes, so what do you know how to play? Asking me. And I'm looking at it. I was like, what do I know how to play? I was like, dude, I don't even know whether I'm left or right handed. I don't even know how to hold this thing. Yeah. Right. So then I asked him, I said, what can you, what, what, what can you play? He's like, oh, a bit of this. And he starts shredding. Like, yeah. blah, 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 all the widdly diddly stuff. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm looking at him, I was like, if this kid's 17 and he could play that, like he was playing uh, for those that know the guitarists out there, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Malmsteen. He was playing all that kind of widdly diddly stuff. Yeah. And I was looking, I was like, why am I even bothering? I don't even know how to hold a guitar. This kid's doing that. Yeah. So uh, fast forward about a year and a half, maybe two years, I'd get lessons up from him every week, basically. Oh, cool. I loved it. I was just, it's, in fact, I bumped into him the other day and I, I was telling, we were reminiscing. I said, dude, you remember when you were teaching? I said, every day, uh, every, like at the end of every lesson when I was, used to leave his house, yeah, I'd count down the days 
to my next lesson. Oh, that's cute. It was, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hugged and we No, cried. I mean, that means yeah. that you were doing something you really oh, loved, you know? Uh, obsessed. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and I still do. It's it's 30 years Thirty years have gone past. So was I'm, he the same age as you at the, t- at the time? 17 and I was 20. Oh, okay. So, so what is he doing now? Is he still in that sort of funny, funny realm? You yeah, funny you ask because he builds guitars for a living. His name is Chris, Chris Lau. And he's has a guitar company called Louder Guitars, L A U D A, Louder Guitars, based up at uh, McGill, top of McGill. Yeah. And his assistant, uh, uh, Kat, she helps him as well. And uh, yeah, no, they build guitar. And in fact, I bought one off him about a year ago. And, and what's the difference between uh, one of their guitars and you know one of those ones that you used to bring in to know that was like worth four and a half grand? Uh, <laughs> similar <laughs> price, but I can honestly tell you because I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying is because you know i consider them friends and i bought a guitar off them sure but the workmanship on this thing is second to none so it, handcrafted oh right? it's it's a yeah. work of art it's yeah. it looks amazing and sounds amazing is there I a certain it. style of guitar that they do only, they do they... Diff- they do different types the, okay. the one i bought is the, the model i bought is called the night owl which is a hollow body basically so uh i i when i buy guitars you know Listen to me, it sounds like I buy them every week, which I don't. Well, but, I mean, <laughs> if anyone looked in your house, they would think you did. Yeah, I have, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, have, I have 13. So, I'll put it this way. I have 13 guitars, right? Yeah. But it's all well and good to buy another. So I've got a Gibson, yeah. Les Paul. I've got a Strat. I've got a Telecaster. I've got an Ibanez. Each guitar set is is uh, a different model, I guess. And they each they each serve a different purpose. They Different styles of music. So the reason why I bought one from Chris and Kat is first and foremost, I like they love their guitars. They're amazing quality. Yeah. But it was also a point of difference as well. Yeah. I mean, what's the point of me getting another Stratocaster? I've got one. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I want to get something different. So yeah. So have you ever bought the same guitar because it was a different color that you liked? Nope. No. Uh, no. No. I've been tempted. Don't get me wrong. Uh, most of my guitars I bought are impulse buy. Yeah. <laughs> Either I'll, I'll go to the shops just to literally buy strings and I'll walk out with a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar guitar. <laughs> I mean, we'll continue on the story, but if you fast forward to Popular Stranger, now mm-hmm. you've got a reason to buy different guitars now. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not that I need an excuse, but yeah, that's my excuse now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, going on from there, so um, old mate who was uh, a few years younger than he was, mm-hmm. he was teaching you, um, mm-hmm. you started to get into the whole. Thing of man, this is actually something I really yeah, want to do now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Where, where did it progress? So that? yeah, like I said, I uh, I remember telling Chris early on, uh, even even after about six months of playing, Chris, my teacher at the time, he goes, "Man, you're ready for bands playing in a band." Just the mere thought of him telling me that story. Yeah. When he when I heard him say that, I broke into a sweat. I was like, "No, <laughs> no." Do, when 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 he was teaching to play guitar, yeah, because I'm so uneducated in this world. No, that's fine. Did you play with him, or he just tell you and uh, show you how to do it? Yeah, he showed me. He more often than not, um, he was a metalhead as well, yeah. but he was a much broader uh, styles of music. He could play jazz, blues, rock. He could yeah, play it all yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But knowing that he knew that obviously that I was a metalhead, so he'd say, "What do you want to learn?" Well, next week, tell me. You know, tell me what song you want to, and I'll and I'll teach you the following week. So it's it's it helps when you're taught or you learn something on guitar or drums or bass or whatever keyboard, a song that you like. Yeah. I, for example, I don't know if, if I've I've heard so many people say, "Oh, my teacher when I first started." These are teenagers or people in their tw- or maybe not twenties. In the teenagers, when their first lesson, the teacher would show them how to play "Bar Bar Black Sheep." Yeah. Like why? Yeah. Like why? Who cares? It's just, it's it's just, learn a song. Yeah. So on my first lesson, I learned how to play. Um, oh, what's that Bob Dylan song? Knocking on Heaven's Door. It's only yep. three chords. Yeah. I couldn't play it to save my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just I couldn't even move my fingers from one chord to the other. I had to use my other hand to move my fingers one at a time. Yeah. Right. A bit slow. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just it's practice. And uh, yeah. So to answer your questions, basically, Chris would. So today we're going to learn this, and you play the riff, and I was like, "Cool." Yeah, because yeah. I was going to say if um, if you guys played together or not, like yeah, because yeah. that's technically like a little band, right? No, it is. So, yeah. so it's, especially when I got a bit more, if you want to call it advanced, you, well, it depends who you ask. But most people progress; they learn rhythm guitar first, yeah, and then they learn 
how to lead, play lead guitar solos, yep. all the woodly diddly stuff. Yeah. So it took me a while to get to that point, right? You've got to learn the. For me, it was learning how to walk or crawl before you walk, I guess. Yeah. So um, when I got to the point where I could uh, play lead guitar to a degree, yes. To answer your question, Chris and I used to jam. So he'd play. He'd say he'd play a, a chord progression in the key of A or C or whatever. Yep. And he'll say play a solo in the key of A. So he'd be going, ding, 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 and I'll try to basically play a solo, improvise. Yep. Which is not easy. Improvising is not easy even even now. But that's how you learn, though. You yeah, yeah. Get thrown in the deep end, so to speak. That's awesome. So um, he turns around and you say, "You're ready for bands." You start sweating. <laughs> Did anything happen from there? Yeah, uh, it wasn't. So I reckon I, I was taking a lessons for about a year and a half, two years. Yeah. And then I just I, I thought, you know what? It's time to use. Like go solo, as in like not solo, as in like uh, keep learning, but by myself. Yeah, you know what I mean by listening to you know back in those days cassettes, CDs even. Yeah. So that's what I did. Unfortunately, there was no YouTube. Like YouTube now, you can get on YouTube and show and say, uh, "Stairway to Heaven guitar solo lesson," and there'll be a person showing you note for note perfectly. Yeah. I still, I still, I still do that after thirty years of playing. I still learn. I'm still learning. I'm not, I don't kid myself. To, I'm not kidding myself thinking that I owe everything. You never do. Yeah. You never stop learning. So anyway, I um, I reckon it was about four or five years, probably two, uh, 1995, I, I remember went to uh, Alan's Music in Gawler Place, which is not there anymore. Yeah. Down the stairwell, there's a pin-up board and it said, it's basically if you're looking for a band, you put an ad up there. And I remember I put up a band, an ad. Guitarist looking for drummer, bass player, singer. Oh, wow. So you, you weren't looking at joining a band. You were wanting to put one together. Yeah. Because wow. one thing I did know, which is probably why I was a bit more nervous, is even to this day, cover songs bore me to tears. I yeah. just I was never interested in being that band that used to play at the pub every Saturday night playing, you know, Jesse's Girl or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure it's fun. Fun for them. As long, you know, as long as they're having fun, awesome. Yeah, they don't look like they're having fun half the time, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Well, for, me, for me, I get, if, in terms of playing guitar, I get a lot more satisfaction trying to come up with my own riff or music. Yep. Even if it's crap, it, I, I don't care. It's, yeah, I mean, it's you, mine. You're pushing you know? out your internal emotions exactly. and all that sort of stuff. And your brain works overtime trying yeah. to come up with something new, yep. original. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, I put an ad out for looking for original band, basically. And this dude called Scott, a singer, called me. I was like, oh, wow. So we we caught up. I remember we, we went to the Cran and Anchor just for a drink. And this guy lived down south, and he was never been in a band before. Never sang, sung. Is that the word? Sung, sang. He was a singer. Yeah, yeah. But it never was. It was never in a band. Never had lessons or anything. It was like, oh, what type? Of, what type of singer was he? So we were a metal band. So he was. He screamed basically. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Which, which is, it was my thing anyway. So yeah. So um, I, so I was like, okay, so we're gonna need a drummer and a bass player. He goes, well. Funny you ask, because I know a drummer and a bass player. And within, honestly, two weeks, we booked a room. I can't remember where it was, a rehearsal room, maybe somewhere at Holden Hill somewhere. Yep. For our very first jam. I had, oh, I had, oh, oh my God. I remember it was like, yes, it was yesterday is the pain. Because <laughs> none of us came prepared, right? Because I didn't know any cover songs, even metal songs. I didn't know any. I knew how to play uh, riffs. Like if she had told me to play Enter Same At, I could probably play the first half of the song yeah. and then that was pretty much it. You know what I mean? Wow. Because for me, I learned those songs not to play the whole song but to learn the riffs and the techniques yep. which yep. you could yep. apply to other styles or other, yeah, sure. other your own riffs. You yep. know what I mean? So I yep. didn't. I never sat down. Even to this day, you, I probably don't even know whole songs, metal songs that is. So we rocked up to this rehearsal room, set up, plugged in. <laughs> I remember we had a, an amp which is the size of a, bloody uh, KFC bucket. Because <laughs> also at this point, you guys aren't best mates. You guys never, aren't Never like, met these people. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. Yeah. yeah. Also, you're not prepared. Yeah. And yeah. fuck knows what's going to happen next. Yeah. So, uh, we're, so we're all plugged <laughs> in. You can hear the humming of the amp. And, go, <laughs> and everyone's looking at each other. And there's that silence. It's like, so uh, what are we going to do? Did they all look at you because you were the one that created them? Dude, it, oh, no. It happens all the time. I'm not complaining, but... I find the guitarist, everyone turns to the guitarist and then say, so what have you got? 
Oh, really? What have I got? What do you got? <laughs> like they're, they're like the, the internal manager. Yeah, no, it's some, I think it's- The because, basic? Like is it the foundation of the song Yeah, or it's, it's the rhythm of the song. Yeah, okay. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the drummer could come up with a beat and I could try to come up with a riff for it. But yeah. More often, so anyway, all these dudes will like turn to me. So, so what do you got? <laughs> like, what have I got? <laughs> yeah. um, Nothing. Syphilis. That's probably about it, guys. What do you guys got? <laughs> a, a headache. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Confusion. Yeah, pretty much. So anyway, it was basically all right. I thought I got to, I got to come up with something. So I literally did chord progressions and the old yeah. jog, 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 and a bit fast and a bit slow, and uh, yeah, and everyone joined in and it was painful. Yeah, but. I'll be honest with you, man. We packed up and everyone's high-fiving each other. And <laughs> I remember packing up and going home and I was driving home and I had the biggest buzz ever. Yeah, it was, yeah, a, yeah. It was um, uh, um, I loved every minute of it. That's awesome. Yeah, but it was painful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, honestly, not, not that we've played many gigs, but playing a gig, it's for me, it's not, I don't want to use the word terrifying, but it's like you mentioned before, I'm a bit of an introvert. It's not my style to be. Um, on stage but when I'm on stage with other people I don't get as nervous no but playing guitar though just adds that extra layer of anxiety sort of thing yeah so- there's something about like A being creative mm. um, and doing it in front of people you don't really know and accomplishing it mm. like if you nail it and you have a great time in the end yep. the fucking high that you go home oh, with exactly like, crazy yes, exactly. you used to get a DJing mm. and th- that's not even really, really any skill let alone you with a skill. Yeah. You know, so. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a stretch, but thank you. <laughs> I'm just, just, just relating. <laughs> yeah. to you. Nowhere near it. No, I was, I was talking about you calling me a, yeah. a skillful person. Skill, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, but I totally get it. What do you mean? It's yeah. no, no matter, it's it's kind of nerve wracking. Not nerve, it's terrifying sometimes on stage. Right? Yeah, yeah. People just looking at you and you're playing, you think, oh, don't. And in your head, you think, all, all I'm thinking is don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. Okay, this next bit, I've got to do this, this next yeah, bit, I've yeah. got to do this. That's how my head thinks because I'm not a virtuoso. Like if you were to ask a pro touring guitarist, they'll play it you know, upside down. This, that. this is the reason why some people get stuck in alcohol performing because like it <laughs> fucking makes them not think about all that sort of exactly. stuff, all the anxiety and what sort of thing. Funny story. I'll go back to the, uh, the whole band stuff. But yeah. I remember one of the things, the first things my guitar teacher told me, he goes, if you ever intend to go on stage, play live, uh, drunk, make sure you practice playing drunk, right? So I've never, I've, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, that is some great advice. Girl. It is, kids I, at home. Yeah, right now, write that down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I've, I've, I've never actually played drunk because I'm not a, I don't, I can't play properly. It's hard enough for me to, you know, play guitar and, and breathe properly, yeah. let alone stand up and be sober. I've seen you have it. <laughs> long, long time ago <laughs> so i remember one night there was one occasion where i had a few drinks so i had a few friends over years ago had a yeah. few friends over for drinks and we were half cut and then like everybody and one of the boys was like you play guitar go play something and i was like oh god so i remember i had a few people in the room and i was drunk i remember <laughs> of all songs uh, i played a megadeth song called uh, holy wars which is fast and very difficult. Yep. So idiot me decides to play that. Oh, I play Holy Wolf as you do, drunk. It was the I remember halfway through that riff, looking up and the look on their people's face <laughs> was, was like, you know, when they wanted like not show that they're uh, disappointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're looking at me as like, oh, that's uh, that's uh, that's good, George. Well done. <laughs> so when you've looked up for them and you've seen that, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously the, the delay of you realizing what's going on is going to be a little bit. Yeah. Um, but. Did you go, maybe it's time to pull out of this? Yeah, pretty and, much. And yeah. can it? Or yeah. you just try to struggle to the end? No, nah, no. Nah, that's what I did, the big wind-up. You do the, the big power chord. Oh, really? <laughs> that was a weird place to put that power yeah. chord. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's head to the bar. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah. there. There were people like, oh, that's, uh, you're good, Georgia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, mega <negative>. death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was the last time. Yeah. So anyway, so the band. So we ended up... Um, Oh, far out. We ended up the name. We had to decide on a name. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing. Trying to come up with original songs that you've when you've never done before. Yeah. Trying to come up with a cool name. Yeah. When you've never done it before. Yeah, because I would assume that um, a lot of the names, even if they do sound cool to mm. the public, mm. you just think they sound like shit. Do you know what we? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, like, I've been through creative processes like this before, yeah. and it's fucked. Yeah. The the weirdest thing was I'll never forget the drummer. He was a pretty cool dude. Uh, Brad, his name was. Sadly, passed away. Yeah. Um, 
he 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 was a very laid back kind of guy, and he loved The Simpsons. And uh, his favorite character is Willie, the groundskeeper, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Scottish guy. Yeah, yeah. And there was a scene. I, I remember. I remember when he said it. When he told me, he goes, "There's a scene where Willie. I think he jumps out of his tool shed, yeah. and he does like a Superman thing where he rips his shirt off, and you can see his chest. Yeah. And he goes, "It's Willie's time, right? So it's, it's me. It, you know, I mean, he's Willie's out there. He's gonna kick some butt and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And he goes." That's what we should call our band, Willie's Time. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not, really, not realizing what the uh, yes. other other meanings yes. of it meant, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> after after we all stopped, you know, high five each other, we're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> <That one. laughs> and then we're like, maybe we should still do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, coming up with a name was uh, not easy. So, we ended up uh, choosing uh, a name called Ill Accord. Ill accord, which means opposite. Accord mean meaning uh, Honda. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the accord meaning. What's a word? What's a, a accord meaning? Everything structured and nice and in place. Oh, okay. Because uh, I thought you were gonna say accord, as in I play accord. No, on no, accord, as in like uh, everything's working and peaceful. Okay. Ill accord, opposite. Ooh, very Whoa, metal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was trying to avoid a cliche metal name. Yeah. So anyway, it came down to a vote, right? There was bin lid. <laughs> like, can I guys wear bin lid? Bin lid, yeah. <laughs> I've always, as a joke, I've always said we should call our band pretty good. So when the singer says, hey, everybody, we're pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that, yeah, didn't, didn't end up. Uh, next band. Yeah, next <laughs> band. <laughs> Maybe a side hustle band. You know, yeah. you're always people that have um, got some little side stuff yeah. going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we picked Ill Accord and we, we put it down to a vote. There was, so there was four of us in the band. And uh, let's just say the vote was three to one and I was that one. I didn't like it. So you're the guy. <laughs> oh. Nay. Yeah, in the nay, background. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I was like, oh, well, look cool it is. <laughs> so again, I was uh, all original songs. And yep. we only ended up doing about six or seven songs. And we played a couple of gigs. So and- still very heavy? Like, is it oh, a yeah, yeah. It's- it's- genre? Yeah, heavy. The, when I, the bands I used to listen to back then was, apart from obviously Megadeth, Slayer, you know, all your cliche, you know, yeah. metal bands from the 80s and 90s, Pantera, Sepultura. Yeah. I was, still am, surprisingly, not surprisingly, still am, listened to death metal. So I used to listen to bands like Carcass, uh, Napalm Death. Surprisingly, <laughs> These are amazing names. Oh, I, 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 could, I haven't heard of those two yeah. bands, but they are amazing names. I could give you some more names, but I, I, it's you, you, you'll question our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Even I, there's another band called uh, Rotting Christ. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go figure, go figure. There's another That's one. It's awesome. I oh, know. There's another one called. Uh, what are they called? Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't remember. What are they? Uh, anyway, I can't remember. Nah, go on. Um, anyway, death. I used to listen to death metal, yeah. right? And uh, just all so death metal compared to heavy metal is yeah. death metal just way screamier, yeah, basically, and it's super duper heavy, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. like death. It, it's to the point, yeah, basically. There's a band <laughs> yeah, called Death yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I used to listen to so most of my riff, and I and I'm gonna get a bit technical now. So sure. I ninety nine point nine percent percent of the guitars out there in guitar world are tuned in standard E tuning. Right, so if you go E, if you hit every string, it'll yeah. be E A D G B E. Right, that's your standard tuning. Most of the songs listed on radio now will be standard tuning. You find in a lot of music, especially metal, if you tune the guitar, make the strings more slinkier, more wobbly, you're tuning it down. Yep, and it sound it goes from like that level. So when you got all the strings down, yeah, the whole guitar just sounds heavy. Full brown note. Yeah. <laughs> like just super deep. <laughs> Pretty much. So I had mine tuned down one and a half steps, which was C sharp, right? Yeah. And uh, it was heavy. It was it was like Black Sabbath have a lot of their songs at, yep. in those in that tuning. So being a one guitar band, I I called the shots. I was like <laughs> which I kinda liked. Yeah. So I said, We're gonna be playing in C sharp. And it was like, oh, okay. So so all my- question here. Does the drummer need to worry about it? No, nothing. Okay, just, cool. just the bass player needs to match. Okay, okay. To match you and guys. I guess the vocalist as well to sort of Yeah, but he he's all right. So yeah. he can just yeah. Scream. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just scream away. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're we're a heavy sounding band, a lot of fast stuff, but I'll be honest with you, we're a garage band. Yeah. Uh, garage band at best, but man, it, I had so much fun. Great bit of software, by the way. 
Oh, Garage Band, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually, yeah. <laughs> so so you, you were literally p- playing in a garage or you still going to the, nah, the we had, rooms? We, we, hired? we hired rehearsal rooms. Yep. Uh, I can't remember, somewhere down Richmond Road. I don't know. That's, I think it's still yeah, there. No, yeah, so, I know the one on the corner of Richmond Road and um, uh, there's a Sir sur- Donald Bradman. There's a survey there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's like across the road? Just behind the building there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there. We said, is it still there, is it? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I remember the one, one oh, being okay. there. Yeah, I th- you know what? I think it is still there. Yeah. I think it is. So anyway, we jammed there. It'd be pretty rough there. Don't yeah. I reckon this would be pretty used. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> they, all, most rehearsal rooms are pretty... Uh, like the little studio we're in here. This yeah. is this is world class. Thank you. <laughs> it's clean. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, so, no, no. So, we're, we're together for about two, three years. Yeah. We, I reckon we played about two or three gigs. But, you know... The last gig we played was in front of two people at the bar who weren't even looking at us. They had their back face to us. And it was like one was, o'clock in the morning on a is Saturday that night. Like Enigma or something like that? No, this was, what was that pub where Nova was, the studio? Yeah. If you go down that main road, remember the uh, adult <laughs> adult venue just before that? Top, oh, what's it called? It's not, it's still there, but there's oh, a um, The flagpole now. place. Yeah. It was before called that, like. Before that now. Before that. The pub. Oh, yeah. And then, then they renovated it. Yeah. That place. Yeah. Um, Fuck it. Yeah. Um, the, you got heaps of apartments above it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's on the tip of my so tongue. We played there, so way before they renovated it. So yeah. I remember we played a gig there. And um, as much as I enjoy playing, but when you play in front of two people on a Saturday night, one in the morning, it's kind of disheartening. And Ran- I Random question. Mm-hmm. Because there's only two people, do you guys still get paid? Mm-mm. Or you're not getting paid at all? Mate, you rarely get paid for gigs. Or well, we don't. Fuck. Never did. Even now. It's just... Whoops. <laughs> Um, he's, he's angry, guys. Yeah, angry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my money? Yeah. Where's my money, bitch? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nah, so yeah, we only played a couple of uh, couple of gigs, but that was so much fun. Though. I I, yeah. I realized, man, as nerve wracking as a gig is and can be. <clears throat> no, no, I, I it's, it's it. the whole trauma, and then mm. looking back and how yeah. much you learnt out of it when you yeah. didn't really know that you're learning. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you guys have done that gig with two people mm-hmm. and then you've decided to finish up. So how does that – do you guys just text each other or phone each other and go, look, guys, uh, I think no. this is a bit shit now? Yeah, basically that. Not, yeah. not, I don't think we had phones back then. No. Um, no, it was a You during- rang each other on each other's parents' landline. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's how it was. I hey, remember, guys. I'll, I'll never, do you know what? I'll never forget. Uh, With the rotary numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was still living at home at that time and uh, my folks being ethnic, yeah. uh, a Greek background, right? Yeah. I'll never forget when Scott called me and the phone was in the kitchen yeah. and my parents had friends over. Now, the thing with uh, uh, ethnic families, right, especially parents, there's no volume switch, yeah. right? So when they talk to to the uninitiated, yeah. you think they're shouting. Yeah, they're not shouting. It's emotion. It's, it's yeah, emotive. That's, that's, the, yeah, that's that's how they talk. Yeah. And I remember being on the phone, and Scott was the first time he called me. Like we we're doing the uh, hi, are, yeah. you, are, you, are you George? Are you the guy? Yeah, it was like yes. And uh, and in the background, it was just like a riot. It was yeah. just people talking and yelling. And I remember turning around to mum and just gave her the. What the hell? Look, oh, yeah, know, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, "Oh, she's so sorry." So anyway, yes. So, um, uh, so yeah. So we, the way we broke up, I guess, if you want to call it, it was very amicable because everyone knew, it was like, you know, I think it was run its course because we actually ended up recording a demo, which was our goal. Oh, really? So okay, we hired cool. we hired a studio, we hired an audio engineer for the day. We practiced about five or six songs leading up to that day for a couple of weeks, and then yeah. we got in there and we just basically plugged in and then knocked out these songs and still got the CDs. So uh, and have you have you uh, listened back to them since then? Every now and then I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll pull out the CD and it's it's uh, yeah I, I listen to what I used to play, and uh, it's, oh my god, it, I play so differently now. I still play heavy yep. stuff and I still listen to heavy stuff, but. Since then, over the years, my taste in music has broadened. Yeah. Still heavy, still hard rock, metal, but I like folk. I like blues. I like I like classical music, believe it or not. I listen yeah, to yeah. classical music. Uh, I've even learnt, I guess you want to call it learnt, I appreciate more so uh, Greek music, Middle Eastern music. Yeah. Just yep. completely different styles. Yeah. It's good for the soul. It's good. Yeah, for, yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's all well and good listening to music loud and fast which i still love i could listen to all day but it's good to mix it up a bit so yeah that, that's what i found like going to music with theater for the first time i was yeah. like oh years ago to go on that's fucked yeah i'm like exactly. going to that and yeah. now you're like no, i really appreciate that yeah. you appreciate good music i you think do. that's what it is that's a, well-crafted music it's exactly right it's probably a blessing that i started playing guitar because 
Um, for me, at least, not not for the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for music, yeah. for music in general. Yeah, your poor neighbours. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they copped it. Yeah, they did. So uh, now, the one thing playing guitars taught me was um, there is as much as I love metal. Yeah, I reckon if we should do a a, a drinking game. Listen back to this and, and uh, <laughs> your, eyes, your eyes lit up. Now, every, yeah, <laughs> like every time I say the word metal on this podcast, we have a drink. Uh, we'll be blind <laughs> in the first ten, I reckon. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So um, when when I sl- quote end quote got better at guitar, you yeah. Know, fast forward three, four, five, six, seven years. Yeah. And then, because believe it or not, as a teenager, even, even when I was in my twenties, up to my mid twenties, learning guitar, I didn't care for Jimi Hendrix. Uh, okay. I didn't didn't care for it. Like people say, oh, you get a list of Hendrix. No, I don't care. It wasn't my thing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like two guitar. Yeah, it's it's, it's like, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. not metal as well. Yeah, no, it's it's know? yeah, it's 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 just not my style. Yeah. I, I can and it wasn't until I actually started listening to him, I was like, oh, I can just little pick it. You pick up little bits and pieces, like, oh, I like what he did there. Yeah, and then you pick, you listen again. It's like, oh, and that as well. And like, I like that as well. And before you know, it's like far out. Yeah, now I get it. Yeah, I get why people love this guy. You know what I mean? And then I started listening to. Um, um, well, the, and also you appreciated it because of the technical part of it. No, as well, exactly right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the skills so, in it. Yeah, and so my my taste in music, like I said, it's still I still listen to metal and I still play metal at home. But yeah. the band I'm in at the moment, Popular Stranger, far from it. Yeah, we're a we're a classic rock band basically. Yeah, which I love. Like Doors, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, that kind of style. Well, your your new singer, what was it called? Uh, you're sticking around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Full Metallica. <laughs> I wish. Like, no, no. It, like, that's literally because yeah. I, I was only introduced to Metallica when Garage Inc. came out. So I had, oh, okay. I had all the new yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I also had the second CD, which had all the older stuff on yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like Metallica. That, that's that's what I get out of it. And and also yeah. like a slow jam, Linkin Park almost. Yeah. I, I see the reference to Metallica. It's like a, like a power ballady Metallica. Like a, yeah, yeah, a Nothing yeah. Else Matters kind of. Correct. And the Unforgiven kind of level. Yep. But yeah, less aggressive guitars. More, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just more bluesy, classic rock style. So is Popular Stranger. You guys have been official as Popular Stranger for not too long, but you've been together for fucking forever, right? Yeah, pretty much. In fact, Popular Stranger, the band, the name, has been around prior. So I met these two boys. Um, shout out to my boys, Steve and Nick. Yeah, yeah. Yo. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, these these two boys, they, they've known each other for, for years. They were, yep. you know. High school sweethearts. Yeah. Is that what you're going to say? You were going to say it. I felt it. And I was going to say it too. <laughs> They've known each other since high school, basically. Yeah, okay. and, uh, yeah sorry about that. <laughs> fraud, fraud, uh, fraudulence. Is that, yeah. is that the word? Fraudient? Fraudulent. No, okay, fraudulent. Yeah, whatever. Do you do the lyrics in the, in the band? No. You, is that what you, there's, a, no there's, a reason, there's a reason why. Yeah, we'll go with that, boys. Yeah. So I met, I met these two dudes years ago, yeah. over 10 years ago, through a mutual friend. Yeah. Because this mutual friend of mine, who were at this, which is weird, because he knew me. I've known this guy. Mutual friend for years. Yeah. Right. And he goes, Oh, do you play guitar? I was like, Well, you only just realize this now. Are you my real fucking friend? <laughs> yeah. Are you listening know. to what I've been talking about? <laughs> so he said, Oh, I, got, I know these two dudes. They play, they, they're playing a band. You can call them and have a jam. So I did. So and, um, were they just playing together? Yeah. They, so they, they, they're what? just at home. They, they, it was just uh, so n- not a full band. Yeah. Okay. So Steve, the, the singer, yeah. I hate him because uh, I'm jealous. He's a multi instrumentalist. Plays guitar. Yeah. Plays drums. Plays bass. Plays keyboards. Wow. And, and, and sings. So just a real committed uh, musical lifestyle. Pretty much. Yeah. So when yeah, when I met them, they used to just jam together. So they whatever mood they were in, they'll pick up what, and Nick Nick's that's another multi instrumentalist. Disgustingly crazy. I, I know, it's, it makes me sick. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, when I, whereas when I play guitar, I forget how to breathe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so Nick uh, also who's the, our current bass player can play keyboards yeah so again those two know how to play multiple instruments whereas I don't so to answer your question what were the guys doing previously they they did have a drummer I believe and they were jamming with him and yeah. they were, there was different permutations I guess of the band but when I met them it was just those two so and- did, they, did they ever play two instruments at once like um, obviously drumming and singing can be done yeah which but is it- what Steve does does no. he drum and have a keyboard to the side nah, every now and then? No, no, no. <laughs> like with his fingers. No. <laughs> Although when we jammed, uh, Steve would uh, grab the harmonica 
and just play drums and harmonica. Far yeah. out, man. But when I, when I say drums, I'm not talking with his hands. Just use his kick. No, yeah, but, but he's but, doing two things oh, at once. Like, I can't do that, like you said. Yeah, like I said, mate, <laughs> I, I, I can't walk and talk without tripping over. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, yeah. So I met them like well over 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, the idea was basically just to jam, have fun. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. So for a long, yeah, long I time. I remember you saying you'd yeah. always be jamming and stuff. And uh, these boys were into original music as well and in like into classic rock, yeah. which at the time um, uh, was I was sort of getting into it. Yeah. But it, we, we say this story every now and then with the boys because it's kind of funny or sad. It depends which way you look at it. My my gear, my guitars and amps I had at that time was still metal. Oh, really? I had nothing that was remotely bluesy or classic rock. So yeah. I remember my first jam with them, and these guys were playing like Led Zeppelin Doors kind of stuff, like yeah. chilled classic rock. And then there's me with my. <laughs> 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 I remember them looking at me, and they were they were polite. They were saying, "It's like rolling up to a fight with a bowl of jelly." Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, Can I, guys? <laughs> or, a, or, or table tennis with a baseball bat? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, there's George come play table tennis with a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, so so uh, so, you, so you say uh, I don't know. Do you remember the first time you jammed? I do. With? Yeah, the first couple times actually, and I remember. Uh, Did you have to adjust? Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, could we go back a, uh, a few years prior to that? Yeah. I can. I was going to say my, I can explain my decline from metal, but it's not really a decline. My my morphing change in taste. Yes, basically. Yeah. So after after uh, Illa Court, I was just playing at home by myself, which is I'm happy with because I had my laptop and I was doing home recording and all that. I don't and think then, that band would have ever gone any further. That name just doesn't ring off. No, like, it doesn't really. roll off no, the tongue. No, it's very really. hard to market. And, and truth is, like I said, love the guys, love the, having fun and all that, but, the, you know, you got to be realistic. Which just sounds <laughs> French as well, you know, whatever. <laughs> you look forward, <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Sounds like a uh-huh. dish, yeah. So after that, uh, <laughs> my mate Rob from work back in the defense company years ago, yep. he played guitar, so we put a band together. Okay. So we're more rock orientated. So we we we, we scrounge a few mates left, right, and center, a drummer or a bass player. So that Rob was the other guitarist. And this band, so this is completely di- not completely, slightly different to the uh, the first band I was in. This is more rock orientated, a bit metal, sure, but more rock. And Rob sang as well. So we had all original songs, and then we were together for about three, four years. We didn't, we never gigged, but we ended up doing a recording as well with this band. Okay, right? cool. Um. As much as I felt like a jerk because I broke their hearts, but I <laughs> sort of moved on from there, right? Because um, there was a local muso, or still is, local muso called Emily Davis. Who you cheated is- on them. <laughs> is that what happened? <laughs> no, I told him up, in, up front. I, said, I was going to cheat on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, There's so- a chick that's just arrived. <laughs> yeah. So-, <laughs> so a mate of mine, Tony, shout yeah. out to Tony. Uh, he tells me, like, calls me one day. He goes, oh, his, his wife... Um, knows a local muso his friends called emily davis and emily davis is basically acoustic folk stuff very chilled i think i've heard of her before you would have heard of her dude she's yeah. been yeah, she's, she's bloody good tell you yeah. you're right very good and uh she's on spotify check it out emily davis um so tony's like dude you you like get in touch have a jam do gigs because she's just looking she's like at the time she she changes formations like what she sometimes she do a full band sometimes half a band do a gig like that yeah or just sometimes just single her or the acoustic guitar yep so this this phase she was going through she just wanted a second guitarist an acoustic guitarist <laughs> and i think at this point i was playing for 10 years so everything i played was fast with electric guitar loud and with distortion so literally the complete opposite to what Pretty she was much. Yep. <laughs> and the funny thing was i don't think at that time i even owned an acoustic guitar <laughs> really yeah i never owned because i didn't care for them because it wasn't loud enough right again i'm uneducated in the whole guitar world mm-hmm. um i did try once but yeah, uh, yeah. i was very very young um can you play acoustic songs with an electric guitar yeah, absolutely you just turn off everything because yeah. if you play like if you plug in an electric guitar into an amp that's yeah. clean channel. Yeah. Because your amp can be, be two channels. More of most of them have. Yeah, because there's always like a button you press and meow. Yeah, basically. That, right? And if you turn that off, it's clean channel, which yeah. sounds like an acoustic guitar. So down to your question, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But um, yeah, I, I I liked noise at that point and speed. Yeah. So I was telling Tony, I was like, mate, I don't, I don't, I don't even have an acoustic guitar and I, I can't even play slow. You yeah. know what I mean? So, so anyway, I was like, you know what? Why not? So I bought an acoustic, called it. At first, I called it first <laughs> before I yeah. made the investment in buying a guitar. Yeah. 
So we hit it off and uh, I loved it. It it taught me to slow the hell down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's and it taught me just to play nice chords. Cuz nice. with metal, mm-hmm. could, you could hide behind the distortion oh. if you fucked something up. Yep. Yeah, cool. You can, yeah, you can. You can. You can hide. You can hide. Especially, especially if you're doing the lead guitar, like the Woodley Diddley stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You just yeah, do another solo. Mate, I still do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, yeah. I still, I still do it now. I'll, I'll do. It, I'll make a mistake, but you can. George, you did 22 minutes of solo continuously. <laughs> you just you couldn't find a place to get out. <laughs> pretty, like, <laughs> pretty much, eh? Yeah. So the, the good thing about meeting Emily Davis, and we did a few gigs as well. I loved every minute of it, even though it was it. it without sounding corny, it challenged me or well, my guitar playing, I guess to get out of my comfort zone, which was everything fast, heavy and loud, yeah. to play acoustic and to play slowly. Yeah. And I learned so much. So we I can't remember how long we did it. Not that long, a year, a year and a half maybe. Just played a half dozen gigs here and there. Yep. So so I loved, I loved doing that. So uh, And then I, that's when I got the phone call to uh, hook up with uh, the guys from Popular Stranger. Yep. So, so, um, so the name "Popular Stranger" is already around. Those, at that point? That, they had that. The boys had that. Yeah, right. Floating around. Yeah. So because I remember they, I asked them. I said, "What's the name of your band?" And they said, "Popular Stranger." And I'm like, "Because the thing is, when you're in and out of bands like I am, or maybe not even, if a friend tells you, if you ask a friend, what's the name of your band?' and they tell you, your head does this like a processing. Yeah, like, yeah. Do I like that name? It's yeah, a yeah. Shit name. I did it with Popular Stranger. Like Popular Stranger like, you know what? I like that name. That sounds killer. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's what that's better than Illacore, to tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I can I'm understand just, it. I like, I like it already. Yeah. So, so anyway, so when I met Popular Stranger, even though I had my gear was, see, with Emily Davis, I used my acoustic guitar. Yep. So all my electric stuff was still heavy metal. Yep. Orientated. So I, that's the gear I took to my first jam with Nick and Steve. Okay. 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 And uh, so, yeah, they're playing along and here's me going... And I was yeah, like, oh. you've, got a, you've got a guitar that looks like a lightning bolt. <laughs> like, they're just yeah. there with their... Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Rock gear. So, but the truth is, I realized pretty early on, even the first 10 minutes, it's like, these guys, I, we clicked. We clicked. Yeah, right. eyes, and, and they noticed, that, well, I'd like to think they did. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, so there was this... And, and above all, they play all originals, which is perfect for me. That's and cool. without sounding cheesy, but... As far as the music goes, I'll be more than happy, for example, Ill Accord. I'll be more than happy to tell you that we're a garage band and our music was nothing special. But like I said, I had a blast, absolute blast doing it, right? Yeah. I can hand on heart tell you that the music that we write for Popular Stranger, I cannot be any prouder. This is the best music I've, I've ever been involved with. That's I know, cool. I know it sounds big-headed, but don't care. No, no, that's but, great. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if, you, if you're not proud of the music, then why are you doing it? Correct. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, so we started writing songs. It's a slow process. It's 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 for for us. It is. Some bands can write songs, you know, in minutes. Yeah, yeah. we don't, right? And that's cool. That that's that's the way it is. You know what I mean? So, but but also, you guys are older with a lot more skill behind you and thought processes and learning. So probably that's another reason why the process takes so. <laughs> yeah, long. it's it's yeah. We we focus on the song. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like for me now, when I play guitar, back in the day, it'll all be it'll all be about look at me, look at me, everybody, look yeah, what I, yeah. look what look, I can do, look, look at my solo, yeah, look yeah. at that. Whereas now, I'll write. I don't care how fast or slow it is, yeah, as long as it suits the song. And I'd like to think not only my parts, but also everyone, like the drummers, the 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 bass player, the keys, or the vocals. We focus on the song. When you guys are writing the song, mm. is it? really up to you to take care of the guitar stuff or is it like a is, is it really a creative space where you all get involved in everyone's business uh, do you know what I mean by that yeah, like, yeah, yeah. everyone's basically you might be so, like oh this drum riff sound might sound better mm. with this song but you're not the drummer the, the way the way we've done it is that they the boys had a collection of songs already before I met them oh, okay right? most of which not most yeah most <laughs> Steve the singer who can also play guitar drums keys and all yeah. that wrote right so some of the songs a fair few of them have been transcribed i guess if you want to call it into rock songs because they were just basically him sitting on the couch playing acoustic ah. so when i first met them steve would say here play this so yeah. i'd play what he played on my electric guitar or acoustic whatever yeah and basically convert that to a rock song you wow. know what I mean? yeah, yeah yeah so that that's that one single we have on spotify uh Soon to be hopefully two, by the way. We have another song around the corner. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Can't wait. 
and uh, that was an acoustic song. But if you were to listen to it, the way we play it live and the way we recorded it, it's yeah. a rock song. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's blaring guitar and loud bits and quiet bits. It sounded nothing like that. <laughs> talk about now is that you just um what do you call it just jammed for years Mm -hmm. right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then your first gig comes up yeah and it's a fucking whopper yeah george it's a whopper no actually it wasn't it was the that was probably our third or fourth your third or fourth gig comes up george is an absolute whopper (laughs) yeah so (laughs) here's a funny story so at that point you know you do the usual adelaide thing where you you go to we did about three or four gigs at some pubs at the West Debbie, uh, far out. Can I remember. Yeah, and how, how, how did you guys get into that? Like, how, like you just West, call them. Oh, really? Yeah, just that's like, what, hey, yeah, we're yeah. a band. The, the hardest thing we'll is- play for beer. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, and you call, you have to ring around. And, and as as much as it's a pain in the ass, you, you kind of rely on your friends to rock up because otherwise there'll be nobody there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. never seen Ooh, us play. I'm coming to the next one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, we did about three or four gigs and-, and uh, just a backstory. Yeah. Nick, the bass player in the band, <laughs> every now and then he'd tell us we'd go to band practice and Nick would be like, oh, I was uh, messaging the singer from, you name any Australian band, I was messaging such and such. from Jebediah. The- yeah, I'm well, not Jebediah. Oh, okay. in, 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 in this case. <laughs> Spider uh, mate. No. Nah. No? Nah? Oh, I'll keep going through them. <laughs> nah. In this case, uh, he goes, I've been, I've been chatting to the dude from Wolf Mother. Yeah. And he was saying this for years prior. And me and Steve would be a, a hurt shorty. Yeah, this uh, guy's a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he's lying to <laughs> he's, us. <laughs> he's, got, he's got imaginary friends. We're going to write a song about this soon. <laughs> it's called Liar. Yeah, pretty right. Yeah, it's yeah, called like, Nick's a Liar. Yeah, La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, one day, I remember. I remember I was at work and this is early 2020. Yeah. Right. Right. January, February, something like that. I reckon February's. Anyway. So is that just before COVID? Literally. Yeah. Two or three months before the lockdown, the yeah. very first lockdown. So Nick calls me, he goes, in panic. He goes, George, I need a yes and no answer. Wolf Mother are playing at the Gov next Thursday, sold out show. We've got the support slot. Do you want, do you want, can you do it? What the fuck? Yeah, I was thinking, and I was like, this is the same imaginary friend you've been chatting to? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. So, and my heart started pounding. It was like, so we're going from playing in front of 20, 30, 40 people to whatever fits the Gov 800, 700. Yeah. And I was like, I was shaking. I was like, as much as I wanted, I said yes, obviously. Yeah. So we practiced. We, we had about a week and a half. Again, not to not to pump our tires, but we put on a good show. I think we do. We when we play our best, which is more often than not, we we get a lot of comments. Apart from saying people are like, uh, your your songs are actually pretty good. Yeah. But they always say you guys are pretty tight, and that's one thing we you know that's I always hang our hat on that one because it's like you got. Is that something you guys have sat down ages going on? We need to be tight. No, or it's just, it just it's just, it just it's happened. Just, yeah, it just happened because we yeah. practice a lot yeah. basically, and the songs aren't complex. They're not. You know, it's not. Um, but know. also you enjoy what you do, so that's exactly. probably why you guys are tight. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, so in saying that though, even though we're technically probably gig ready, but we were a week and a half away from the gig. Yeah. So we practiced pretty much every night leading up to it. And we would, some nights we were nervous, the other nights we were so excited. And I was, and I, and I, and I was thinking to myself, thinking, I was like, fuck, I wonder how I'm going to feel on the night. But dude, I'll be honest with that, not one ounce of nervous energy at all. I really? Not, even, even leading like the you know nothing. the day of or the day nah. two days beforehand, nah. nothing like that. I, th- I remember it was a Thursday night and I took a day off Thursday, right? Yeah. And um, did you put it down in your annual leave? Because because uh, <laughs> not many people did back then. <laughs> yeah, I should have taken a sickie. Yeah. Take a sickie, and then I'm in the gov website. Guys, I'm just going to head out for a bit to go pick up some tech stuff for another yeah. radio station and not go back. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, I remember the gig was on a Thursday. I'm pretty sure it was a Thursday night. And uh, yeah, I just woke up, chilled in the morning, uh, grabbed my. That's gear. fucking nuts! Because you should be nervous oh, as fuck. I know, dude. I know, because because um, I remember um, uh, when I sometimes when I drive to gigs, yeah. Um, I, I in my head, I I I I tell myself, 
far out. In two in an hour's time or two hours time, you're going to be playing guitar in front of people. And as soon as you start thinking that, it's like, yeah, oh, when shit. You, you do the countdown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 um, you get nervous, basically. Yeah. But I wasn't doing this, though. And if, even when I was for the Wolf Mother gig, it was more excitement than anything. Do you think, oh, I mean, oh, you guys are prepared because mm. you worked your asses off, right? And it's, it's yep. your time to shine. But also, yep. uh, do you think it's something to do with like, so much trauma has gone through your body about this that it's gone so far over that you've become, yeah. you know, full circle yeah. and calm, cool, and collected. We're cool, calm, and collected. Yeah. But at the end of the day, though, we're only doing this for fun. You yeah, know what okay. I mean? yeah, yeah. If you make a mistake, big whoops. No one's, no one's going to suffer. Yeah, you know what it I mean? was. You weren't relying on it to, um, for a record contract no. or anything like that. It was yeah. just literally a bit of fun. That's that's all. That's why we do it. That's why we still do it. We're just for fun. How did the other boys go with it? Were they sweating a bit? Or no, they were right not as really. Well? No, it's surprising. Well, I remember before the gig, we got there early for sound check, and then uh, we we sat in the booth while people started coming in, and, yeah. was, and even then, it was like no, it's just. And in, I remember, um, in fact, it was a bit of a, because you know how it is with cover, uh, support bands. Yeah. The full crowd, you generally don't get the full crowd. You might get 80% if you're lucky. Yep. Everyone else is at the beer garden or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So as much as I was, well, I, I wanted to play, take this opportunity to make the most of it, to play in front of a big crowd. I was yep. like, fuck it. I was, even if it's 800, I want to play in front of 800 people like the full house. Yeah. And I remember when we first started, our first song, Halfway through our first song, nobody was there. There was about 25 people. And you've been at the Gov. 25 people yeah, in yeah. a big room is just, it's yeah, like it's, the, uh, it's like an old year seven school social. Where <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty uncomfortable. Very uh, uncomfortable. If we're heading back to my year seven. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. But that's the thing. I, um, I remember sitting halfway through the first song. I was like, you know what? I fucking, people need to hear this. Not, yeah. not so much people. Well, yeah, people need to hear this, but. I want to. I want to see more people. I want to play. I want to, like even if it's one time ever in my life, I want to play in front of a big crowd. Yeah. And then um, as it happened, halfway through the second song, I reckon we we're out at our peak numbers by the second song. We played about seven or eight songs. It was forty-five minutes set. Wow. So I reckon for the majority of our set, you know, second song in, we were playing in front of six, seven hundred people. I know you guys were cool, calm, and collected, mm. but there's obviously pressure playing for the first time like properly in mm. front of a real audience you know a real numbered audience yeah. uh, you got wolf mother maybe listening yeah, as well yeah. record people might even be there management Possibly. all yeah. that sort of stuff yeah. like future bookers um how do you remember hmm. the songs and making sure like because <laughs> fuck um my brain is not good at the yeah. best of times do you know what man practice yeah okay. I, I remember remember the, we um, are you able to let go and just continue to play and you just no. just do muscle no. memory, no. or no? I'm not that. Like, I I do maths in my head for good, good, bad, or otherwise, right? Yeah. So when I'm playing, you you'll find you write uh, um, dance music, right? Yeah. Um, you'll find there's patterns, and just like in yeah, any yeah. rock song. Yeah. So a verse, an intro might be this riff played four times. Yeah. Followed by two times this riff. Followed yeah. by eight times this this and this is the chorus, and that's how I play. I yeah. should play by the groove of the song and by the vibe. I try to. That's the proper way to do it. Yeah. But I'm I'm do it by maths. Very so, calculated. So yeah, very calculated. And well, that's why like, you're tight. Yeah. If you're yeah. just feeling the vibe, you yeah. get loose as all hell, yeah. right? I do play by vibe because after a while you do know, oh, there's a change coming up, with even without doing the maths. But I guess then you get like is there a difference f from when you start playing you're quite calculated, say you're three quarter way through the gig, you're very comfortable with what's going on out yeah. there. You're starting mm -hmm. to love it like mm -hmm. properly. Yeah, exactly. And you start to relax a bit. Yeah, yeah, you do. And your fingers are warmed up. There's no no matter how much warming up you oh, do pre gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the first two or three. I remember the first song with the solo was pretty easy. Yeah, I remember hit a dud note. It's like, uh oh, hope there's not a precedence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but two, three, four songs later, my fingers were nice and warm, and it was it was fine. But, That's cool. And the worst thing is, is when it when it wrapped up because uh, you got you got your uh, your your run sheet on the floor in front of you with all the songs. Yep. And you'd be surprised how fucking quick it goes, man. It's like you just—it's a—it was a forty-five minute set, and okay, you go through the first one, and your heart's pounding after the first song. I'm not pounding in a bad way, but it's like oof, in your head you're going, "Whoo, one down." Yeah. All right. Okay, now the next one. And then before you know it, like if you start counting them down like that, before you know it, it's like, "Shit, that's a, we're on our last song." It's, yeah. it's it's over before you know it. Yeah. And the worst, and the worst thing, everything comes to an end, I guess. But it's not a it's not a twenty-four-seven gig. Yeah. But I remember it was at the end of the song, and I was like. 
fuck, I could, I could go another half hour easy. We got easy, easy. I was loving it because the, the good thing was the crowd was very appreciative. They were, they were digging it. Were you the one that did the final strum? Like, <laughs> wow, like being the guitarist and being the foundation of the band? Uh, yeah, like, I always tried to do that, but no. <laughs> and then uh, who's your singer? Is it Nick? Steve. Steve, yeah. And Steve's like, uh, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. And you, and you, and you, and you just try to get that get last strum in. Do you ever yeah, do that? I'll do that, yeah. It's a guitarist thing to do. And then ride it out as far as you yeah. can. But then the drummer could always do a Oh, yeah, that's after true. That, and that's then I'll just go... Just ride that um, <laughs> symbol for uh, as long as they can. Um, and yeah. uh, so you finished You finished that gig. Yeah. It's fucking sick. Oh, I love it. You guys yeah. have all had the greatest time ever. You've yeah. looked at each other going, we can do this forever. Oh, dude. Yep. Um, yes. Did you get any feedback from Wolf Mother or say the fe- also feedback from the crowd? Like, did they come up and say hi? This is the first time ever, yeah. ever, um, that uh, the, the band, not ever, but... Yes, so when we went when we went down to lug out, we took our gear off stage, and then we were standing near the bar. People coming yeah. up to us for the first time and saying, "Fuck, man, you guys are fucking excellent!" I was like, and I was sitting. I was like, "It's such a good feeling. Yeah. It is so good. It, it's 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 and, um like I said, I'm proud of the songs we write. I, I think our songs are really good. They're yeah. killer, right? Um, but when other people dig it, it just makes it that much better. I was like, "Shit, man!" It's oh like, yeah, it's like far. It's like you really you like this song? It's like. Cool man, thanks. You know, not, what not I mean? trying to take away from your story, but yeah. I, I still remember mm. the day or the night that I was in the crowd, standing at the bar at a venue I was about to play at. Yeah, and these two chicks had walked in and they looked at the set list on the on the wall, mm-hmm. and they ran their finger from the top mm. right down to my name mm. and went and like pointed at it. Oh wow! And said like one a.m. He's on. Oh, wow. That's what we're here for. And yeah. it was the greatest moment it ever. Is. It, it's, it's such it's a good randoms. Feeling. Yeah. Such a good feeling. Yeah. Because everyone that knows our music is us, obviously, and yeah. our friends. Yep. And But when it goes outside that circle, it's like, fuck, man, thanks. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool. And, you know, the funny thing was I remember after that, um, I'm, and not to sound modest or anything, but, you know, I play, I've been playing guitar for 30 years. I can do a bit of this, a bit of that, but I'm nothing special, right? I don't never consider myself anything virtuoso, right? But um, I remember I was <laughs> in the men's room in the piss trough, right? Yeah. And there was a dude you, coming. You in it. A big night. So I was, I was, uh, I was at, I was at the uh, urinal. Yeah. And uh, the dude comes up next to me, and I could see in my peripheral peripheral vision. Yeah. He looks my way, then he does a did a double take. Oh, like like you're the celebrity. Yeah. And and why are you in a trough? Yeah. (laughs) Get out of there. Yeah. I got a piss in there, mate. Get out of my trough. Yeah. And and it's awesome. He does a double take. Goes, you're that. You're the guitarist on that stuff. You're just on, man. You're a fucking killer guitarist, man. That's like, so good. Yeah, I'm like, thanks, man. I'm like, oh, zip up, get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, and then looks downwards. Yeah, um, <laughs> Dis- disappointed. <laughs> yeah, you gonna play that later on as well? Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, off the back of that, uh, what happens then? So, so do you guys um, go back to the drawing board? You're like, hey, we should do more gigs. Oh, this is fantastic, yeah. oh, mate. That, that, Can that, we get a song out finally? Maybe yeah, exactly. That's that's a sort of thing that puts a cracker up your ass and you think you know what let's we we don't do this uh with one intention only to make a career out of it because if you do you're going to be disappointed yeah but you do it for fun my my mentality no matter what i do especially guitar right um if you do something even if it's for a hobby do it professionally right but not professionally to become professional but just do it properly yeah no no half-assed efforts yeah you know what i mean yeah um and if something comes out of it, perfect, sweet. And we, well, by something, I mean gigs, you know, maybe a career. But we, we're not, we're not, we're not kidding ourselves. Not. Maybe it's on Spotify so you can appreciate other people. Ex- exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things like that. It's just little things like that when people turn around and say, that's pretty good or we might be able to hook you up with another gig, which is what happened. You know what I mean? People, there was a, a, a guy and a girl in the, in the crowd messaged us or hit us up on Facebook months later and they said, we were at, we saw you guys supporting Wolfman and we thought you were great. Yeah. Um, they play in a local band called Cosmic Landing and uh, similar music to us, like classic rock kind of style. Yep. And they had a gig coming up at the Gov in a few months' time. They said, do you, do you guys want to support us? And we're like, fuck yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, how, that's how it works, you know what I mean? So, so, yeah, we did get, you know, if you want to call it kickbacks sort of thing. But that was but problem was, man, it's again not that we were expecting to go to take off and, and conquer the world musically after that gig, but 
we were in such a that was the best position we've ever had as a platform to maybe take it to the next level yeah right? or do something with it you know what i mean because we got so many good reviews from people people like at at a music shop a guitar shop saying oh like they recognize you or they say oh you were the support at wolf mother like you guys were good you know shit like that yeah but unfortunately, COVID hit and everything stopped. Oh, yeah, dude. Mother. <laughs> um, before that gig mm. with Wolf Mother, did you have, like, did you guys um, find that you had already like a small support a support, pay, a support nah. base of people nah. sort of starting to come together? Not strangers, no. No. Nah. No, nah, it was all friends and we do gigs and there'll be, there always there'll be a, a, you know, a, a someone at the bar or people, random people. But, yeah. Yeah. But we, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's, it's just it's the momentum stopped, man. It was disappointing. But so, what did you guys do through COVID then? So did you guys sort of we just, just jam? Or yeah, just like, we kept on jamming, writing songs, and then with face marks on and being one point five <laughs> meters away from each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> so yeah, we just we just kept on doing that. But then uh, a while ago, we decided to um, record our music properly because yeah. we did a demo. I think it might have been during COVID. No, before COVID. Uh, was we, that when I was about to leave Nova? Because I, re- yes. I reckon you guys came in it was on, on the Saturday, weekend or something. Yes, it was a Saturday afternoon and we used the facilities at Nova. Yep. It was during the afternoon. I remember you were in the other studio on air. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so we were in the recording room there in the booth. Yep. All packed in. With Miles. With Miles, yes. Yep. And he recorded us. It was it was a demo. Yeah. Basically, the, the difference between a demo and what we do now as in proper recording. A demo is basically everybody in the one room plugged in, turned on, microphone up. And record at the same yeah, time. Yeah, no, 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 nothing split channel. It's nothing, just one channel. It's just one recording. Yep. Yep. And it, it sounds like it, but not in a bad way. It's a demo for a reason, basically. Yeah. So we managed to oh, far out six, seven songs. Because was that your that demo recording? Was that your first ever recording yeah. together as a band? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with me in the band. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 Come think of it, I'm not sure if the boys ever did anything pre. George in the band, so um, not that it really matters. Ah, did, you know that, 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 that era doesn't count. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, that was 100 B G yeah. before yeah. George. <laughs> exactly. Wiped, wiped from history. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you guys do the demo. You're like, this is okay. Yeah. We need to do this properly. Yeah. And then what happens? So we got Miles, yeah. uh, who Miles just as a. Um, because I used to work with uh, with Miles in uh, Nova Production, and he was just fuck the radio stuff. <laughs> he was really, really good at um, music yes, production. He was. He's uh, yeah. He plays instruments. He's, I think he's even recorded bands previously. He's recorded his yeah. own music, so yeah, yeah, he yeah. knows his stuff. So anyway, so we uh, set up. We we currently jam at Steve's house. It's yep. very convenient. It's a solid brick house. Just leave all our gear there. Yep. And Miles comes every week or second week or third week. You know how it is. Life gets in the way. You can't everybody be there. People have families or jobs and all that. Correct. So we do it whenever we can. So it's a slow process, but labor of love, I guess. Yep. You know what I mean? So um, so that's what we do. Basically, um, Miles comes in. We uh, practice all our songs before he turns. We, like, we, okay, we'll say when Miles is in this week, we're going to play, we record this song. Yep. So leading up to that recording session, we'll practice the song, make sure we get all our bits or proper. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's what we do. So it's it's like I said, it's a slow process, but we'll, we'll we'll get there. So we've got one song. Yep. We've got another song, hopefully a week or two away. It's pretty much done. It's in the can. Miles yep. just needs to master it, and we'll upload it. Yep. So um, should I do a uh, what's it called a uh, shameless plug for our Spotify and YouTube channel? Absolutely. Imagine if I said no. I oh, know. <laughs> 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 this Andy guy was an arsehole. It was just a podcast. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so uh, the thing was- All right, the- we have to go to the ad, so ad break right now. <laughs> let's, <laughs> well, let's check traffic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so- <laughs> yeah, so uh, the thing with YouTube, like, again, we're a small channel yeah. and uh, one song. Um, so if you were to, being a small channel, if you type in Popular Stranger, you won't get Popular Stranger. No, You'll, I did that and yeah. I got a, uh, what did I get? I got uh, the daily Madden 23 Ultimate Teen content yeah. and an Instagram artist guy called Brody Fresh yeah. from somewhere in the US. <laughs> so that's not us. <laughs> yeah. Not us at all. So to find us, you basically have to look for the song. Yeah. So uh, so do a search for Popular Stranger. Uh, 
you're sticking around. That's the name of the one song we have up. Yeah, and, so, and it's the, the the white circle with the red P. Yeah, yeah. There's a yeah, P and a S. Popular yeah. stranger. I can't yeah. remember red and blue or red and black or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's a white background with a P and a S. So yeah. that's our logo for now. So yeah, if you if you get on YouTube, look up Popular Stranger. You're sticking around. You'll get that. Yeah, so hopefully in a, another week or two or three or four, we'll have more songs. Up. How, how so, many do you reckon you got in the bag ready to roll? Uh, we've got one. That's literally... But, but I mean like as in like you, you've got them we, written sort of thing. Uh, so the way, the, the way they're recorded is you do instruments at a time. Yep. So we've got a number of them after that that are uh, the drums. So it's just a matter of adding the guitars and bass and all that. So yep, yep, yep. that is still a, it's not a one day process though. No, it no. still takes time. But we do have, mate, we have, if on hand on heart, we could easily do two to three albums full of pretty decent material. Yeah, it's just a matter of doing it. You know what I mean? So, so it's just takes time, takes effort. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So we're also on Spotify as well. So if you get on um, Spotify, look for Popular Stranger. I think you should find us. It's the the no other. There's no other. Just pop- look for the PNS with yeah. the white background, white we'll background, fine. red and black font text, and uh, yeah. So and yeah. Just quickly, because I know you guys are doing all the support act. You're going to be supporting Haley um, yes. on her uh, single launch down yep. at Pirate Life. We are. Yeah. Sunday, April sixteenth. Again, it was Nick. Nick. With his connections? Yes. yes. Knows Steve Jeffrey. From Atlas Genius? From Atlas Genius. And that so, was just like a chance meeting down at Victor. Basically. Here we are now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that, that summed up a 20-minute story in, in, in two seconds. But yeah, it was the most chance, the biggest chance meeting ever. Yeah. And uh, just so happened to meet a dude that plays in a huge Australian band. Yeah. And here we are. So, <laughs> and the most random thing Adelaide style is that uh, somehow you, the whole Nova thing, you working at Nova came up and then Steve yeah. goes, yeah. do you know Andy Martin? Yes. And then all of a sudden Adelaide uh, becomes a lot smaller or the world becomes a lot smaller. It's that whole six degrees of separation. Yeah. In this case, it's probably about three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three really good ones. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, April 6th, is that Sunday? Let me check. Sunday, uh, April 16th. Yeah. Pirate Life. And we've also got, can I give another shameless plug? Yeah. So Friday, June 16 at the Exeter. Yeah, cool. We've never, it- we've never played at the Exeter before, but I'm thinking it's in the front. Just you guys or is it part of a oh, sort and of festival? Hayley will be supporting us as the, we're returning oh, the cool. favour. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, so, yeah. and she's taking you to Brisbane and Melbourne, Melbourne or something? Melbourne, yes, yeah, yeah. in July. So, Sick. It's, so, yeah, we've gone from twiddling our thumbs gigs-wise yeah. to all of a sudden we've got gigs don't know what to do with them. Wolf so. Mother Who, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, they'll be they'll be supporting us soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Well, that's you're, exciting, man. You know the funny thing with Wolf Mother? We, we, me and the boys laugh about it all the time because we didn't, we've never played at a venue where there was a backstage. Like, never. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, does the have a backstage? Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. Okay. So, if, as you're facing the stage, yeah. the if you're the musician, you walk to your right. Oh, or okay. If you, if you walk to your left, you fall off And it's stage. like a small green room? It's basically, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we were hanging out there with the boys and being uh, a famous band, them, not us, the, the pub brings out pizzas and beers. And yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so we started nibbling on the pizzas and the beers. Uh, and we, sorry. Yeah, uh, we, we, yeah, basically. <laughs> really? we, we were told. Yeah, we got the look. It was really? Like, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, maybe we shouldn't be eating their food. <laughs> Far out, man. And the thing is, we didn't know. <laughs> You're, do, you're doing the gov a favour uh, by being there. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm being invited. I was like, oh, oh well. No, nah, well, I'm proud of you, George. Thanks, man. Well done. Thank you very much. I might ask this question to you right now. Mm. Um, what's what's it like being in Popular Stranger? <laughs> uh, it's good, man. It's good. It's uh, it's it's a good uh, good way to get away from life. You know what I mean? It's for me. I find uh, music and guitar uh, as an outlet. It's therapeutic. You know what I mean? Um, writing songs, like I said, um, I couldn't care less about playing cover songs, but I could spend all day at home sitting down, playing guitar, just doodling, and then trying to spit out a riff or a tune, right? Yep. And use that for the band, yep. basically. So for me, it's whether I'm jamming with the boys or just hanging out with the boys or at home writing something for the band. Yep. Ah, it's just, it's awesome. And like I said, the, the experience we had at the Supporting Wolf Mother, and it's like, far out. Is this, is this what it can be like? I was like, I want some. I want yeah. more of that. And, you and know the, what I mean? The crazy thing is, it's like 
one percent of yeah. what it's probably oh, really like as well. Mate, you know, like absolutely. that was a real taste. Absolutely, man. So, and the crazy thing was, we're playing the ESPY in in Melbourne in St Kilda, which is. I guess like the gov equivalent over there. It, SP's. Oh you, yeah, I've been down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah, yeah you name yeah. you name any big Aussie band. Yeah. Even international bands, they've played there. So, you know, hats off to Haley and uh, and uh, Steve. Steve, far out. <laughs> 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 I was going to say his surname because he's got <laughs> similar. Well, but, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Miles' last name is the same. And I yeah. thought they were brothers. Or I know. Something. <laughs> um, one's got a thick accent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, George, for joining no. me, and uh, all the best with the the band and, uh, you and yourself, much. and just being a, a massive celebrity known as Popular Stranger. Thank you very much. We'll uh, we'll see you at the gig at the Pirate Life and uh, scream for us. Yeah, and hopefully not in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you know. <laughs> no righteous sense of me.